Okay, my name is Will. I'm going to talk today about working towards better interactive formal specifications, in particular, the work I've done on building an interactive browser environment for, for interacting with TLA specs. So at a high level, the goals here, um, which I think were touched upon previously within the TLA Plus community and at TLA Plus conferences, that generally it's nice to have a better way to interact and get an intuitive sense of a specification um, without doing sort of full exhaustive model check checking or property checking, uh, in particular, being able to basically uh, interactively explore behaviors of your specification, understand what uh, traces, possible traces of the system, and then also being able to, for example, once you explore a trace or do some analysis, being able to share that easily with others, uh, and then also having visualization capabilities that allow for, for sort of a more dynamic viewing uh, uh, functionality and, and animation and visualization of states in your trace. So those are really the goals here. And basically tackled this problem by building a native interactive browser environment for interacting with TLA specs. And this basically can, consisted of two main subcomponents. So the first was basically building a JavaScript interpreter for TLA plus which I'll talk about a bit, and then also building a web interface uh, around this for interacting with specs and models. Um, and so during the talk or, or, or now, you can go ahead and try it. This is the GitHub repo. Um, given the length of this talk, I'll give sort of a very high level discussion of some of the tool implementation details, and then I'll try to spend more of the time on just demoing uh, features of the tool. So the first thing is the JavaScript TLA plus interpreter. So this was basically, um, an effort to just sort of build a, a roughly TLC compatible interpreter for TLA uh, in plain JavaScript. And this was to a large extent enabled by work that had been done by Andrew Helwer on building a parser for TLA plus in the tree sitter framework, which is uh, a general framework, but allows you then to, let's, for example, do parsing of TLA in WebAssembly. So you can do parsing, for example, right in the browser. Um, and so I made use of this to build this JavaScript TLA interpreter. Um, Currently, this is around 4,000 lines of JavaScript in terms of the whole interpreter implementation. Uh, and this was basically an on and off development effort uh, of myself sort of as a side project over the last one or two years. Uh, in terms of sort of completeness of features, um, sort of from a personal judgment analysis, the feature parity is getting pretty close with TLC, I think, based on sort of features that have been added and specs that I've continued, more specs that I've tested. Uh, one notable exception right now is sort of there's a preliminary implementation of module imports. Um, so it sort of works for basic things, but it doesn't sort of include a full implementation of the module system. Uh, somewhat of the assumption for doing interactive spec exploration is that you would be working with mostly monolithic specs where essentially everything's defined in one file. Um, but this is some future work to expand this. Um, and basically all standard module operators are are also built into the tool as well. Also say a note about testing. So obviously sort of making sure, verifying the correctness of this interpreter was, was important and, and TLA being a complicated and expressive language uh, became somewhat difficult. So basically all the testing now is done via conformance testing with against TLC. So basically we just generate a reachable state graph for a given spec and model in, in the JavaScript interpreter and compare this with the generated reachable state graph uh, from what TLC produces. And this is a pretty effective way. And basically we do most of the testing right now in, in, this, um, in this approach. And we have around 70 specs that we currently test in, in our test suite. This is like around over 2000 lines of TLA, uh, that uh, lines of TLA plus code that we're testing right now. Okay, so the interactive web interface is basically a web um, interface is built around this JavaScript interpreter as, it's, as a core component. So the basic interface here, which I'll show in a second, allows you to basically load a TLA spec from a URL, and then allow you to dynamically instantiate constant values for that spec, as you would, for example, define a config or a model for TLC. Um, and then the main sort of interaction point is that you can explore traces dynamically of your spec by selecting the uh, what a, a set of enabled transitions that the, from the current state. Uh, this is coupled with the variety of trace exploration features, including things like trace expression evaluation. So you can dynamically evaluate TLA expressions at each state of the trace, which again, I'll show. Uh, and then you can also dynamically hide and show variables from the trace, and then also copy links to traces that you can just load in a new browser window. Um, and then you can also visualize states of a trace um, as well. So with that, I'll just jump over to just show a demo of, of 
what the tool looks like and how you use it. Okay, so this is the um, this is the GitHub repo for the tool. And you can see a variety of examples and things linked, um, but I'll just open up the main interface. So this is the main TLI plus web explorer interface. And I'll explain, you'll see this a bit more in a second, but basically you have over here, this pane for selecting the next state to choose in your trace. And then over here, you'll see the states of the current trace once you start exploring. So the main, an example of a main flow you, you would do for the, for the tool basically is let's say you have some spec lying around. This is an example, just to get a spec on GitHub of the two-phase commit protocol for like coordinating a set of resource managers to commit a transaction. And so we can just take this specification, the, a link to the raw specification and load it in the tool basically. Okay, so we can load this into the tool. And then what we'll see at first is that there's basically this specification has a constant parameter, which is the set of resource managers that we that needs to be instantiated before we can start exploring. So we can, for example, as you would normally do in TLC config, let's say instantiate this with like two model values basically, which represent just a set of two resource managers. Okay, so then we instantiate those constant parameters. And now again, we're presented with this view where on the left, we have this pane for selecting the next state. In this case, we're now choosing what initial state we're gonna start in. So we just have one choice, so we'll start there. Okay, so now we actually see on the right, in the right pane here, the current trace that we've explored so far. And then on the left, we have this whole, this showing us the set of possible actions that we can take. Um, in particular, the, what the tool currently does is it sort of parses the actions of a spec into this more structured form. And, and so if you look at the actual transition relation of this spec, for example, you have all these actions in this case that are like parameterized by these constant values, in this case, like a particular resource manager. So we sort of follow this convention, which is kind of done in TLC as well, where we treat these as sort of first class actions that are then parameterized by some argument. And that's sort of what you see show up here. So first we show all actions that appear in the specification, and then we gray out ones that are just not enabled in the current state. And then for example, we see the set of enabled actions and some of them that have parameters which define the particular action that's gonna be taken. So for example, this RM prepare, which represents a resource manager preparing and then sending a message, a prepare message out. Uh, we have that action possible for either for either one of the resource managers, so RM1 or RM2. So for example, if we then take this RM1, RM prepare action, we see that this we moved, we've added a state to the trace and this RM1 state is now in prepared state, okay? And then we now have a slightly different set of enabled actions as well. So what I'll do is I'll just step through an example of a trace driving the protocol to basically commit. So we can have this second resource manager prepare as well. And so we now see that both resource managers have moved into the prepared state and they've both also sent these messages, these prepare messages into this messages variable set, okay? So from here, now what we're able to do is have the transaction manager, we can see this TM receive prepared action, which is the transaction manager is now able to receive these prepare messages and record them for each resource manager. So we can do this basically for both RM1 and RM2. And then what we now have is this TM prepared, which recorded those messages. Uh, so now the transaction manager is basically uh, um, ready to commit if it wants, which we see up here with this TM commit action that's now enabled. Okay, so they can click uh, take this action and now the transaction manager in the trace has moved to the committed state. And then now it's also sent out a commit message as well. And so each re, uh, resource manager can receive this and accordingly commit. So we can execute commit message where this now moves a resource manager into the committed state and do this for both resource managers. Okay, so now everybody has committed. Okay, so that's just sort of an example of how you step through a trace interactively. Like I said, some other features we have here now are this one of them is this these trace expressions. So for example, we can dynamically evaluate TLA plus expressions at any point in this trace. So we now have this trace built, but we can say things like uh, just even simple expressions like cardinality of messages and add this as a trace expression. So for example, we see this evaluate to three, which is the cardinality of this set. And this is evaluated dynamically at each point in the trace. 
So if we move back in the in the trace, we can see, okay, it's two here uh, in accordance with the value of this messages set. And what we can also do, like I said, is now we have this trace and we, let's say, added some trace expressions. We can also copy a link to this trace uh, and open this in a new window. And this will just load up, basically, if we have a linked spec, it'll load the spec, the constant instantiations. Um, and in this case, it'll load the trace expressions as well that we had defined. So we're right back where we were. Uh, we can, for example, step back in the trace, uh, backtrack and take different paths, et cetera, starting from where we, we left off. So what we can also do is we have a full, basically, REPL as well in REPL environment available to us, which is similar to trace expressions. But we can, if we go over here, we can evaluate first just arbitrary TLA expressions. So we can just do things like set union, set intersection, right? We can just put arbitrary TLA expressions in here say things like length of the sequence, okay? Then you can also though evaluate, this REPL also is basically evaluating expressions in the context of the loaded specification. So it has access to basically any definitions that exist in the current specification that's been loaded in the tool. So if, if you see, for example, over here, we have like these two simple definitions, R1 and R2. So we can actually, we actually have access to these in our REPL as well. So we can say things like the union of these two sets um, for the intersection. Uh, and more generally, you might have like more complicated operators or something that you've defined in your spec that you can just use in the REPL as well. Okay, so one final feature I'll talk about here is the I, the, the feature of, do, of having an animation or visualization of each state uh, of the trace. So we can see this little toggle button here where we have our trace and now, this allows us to enable a visualization of each state of the generated trace along over to the side here. And what's how this is generated right now is just actually by a definition of this particular animation visualization right in the spec. I won't go through all the details, but it basically there's a, a little DSL defined right in TLA for just defining these kind of SVG based anima, uh, animations. Uh, and this is all sort of evaluated dynamically again at each state of the trace. So in this case, for example, we just have this little visualization where we have sort of nodes to represent each resource manager and a transaction manager. They sort of start out gray in this sort of neutral state. They move to this prepared state indicated by blue here. So both resource managers prepare. Then the transaction managers we see here it sort of records their prepare messages one at a time, okay? And then we have this green state, which means now the transaction manager is committed. Then it sends that commit out to each resource manager, which in turn each enter this green committed state as well. Okay. And then everybody ends up committed. And again, another thing to note is that this is all defined just right in the spec and evaluated dynamically. So for example, you can even do things if we go over here, I won't explain the animation definition in detail, but you can let's say go into the spec and change the definition of this animation. So like we have this commit color being green, we could, for example, just change this to some other color uh, and this should show up right away in our trace and in, in visualization. Okay, so for sake of time, I'm gonna stop there and just wrap up, but that gives a very high level view of all the features. Um, so in general, there's some future work that, that I'm interested to, to look at. One thing that's been brought up is the notion of uh, sort of automatic support or detection for plus cal specs and plus cal labels that you might be able to dynamically uh, detect that and visualize that better in traces, for example, in terms of process uh, counters and things like that. Also, I think it might be interesting or helpful to have this kind of exploded trace view based on process or node sets so that instead of having one single trace, if you have a, a set of processes, uh, you could automatically explode to have sort of a trace per process. Um, and then I think also having a simple interface for doing some some amount of simple sort of model checking of properties or invariants, um, and also having a couple with this better support for sort of doing asynchronous evaluation or background checking. And like I said, also fleshing out module support more completely is sort of in a preliminary stage right now.
yeah, so that's pretty much all for me. Feel free to just try out the tool, play around with it, try your specs on it, see if things work, they don't work, file issues. Um, yeah, so happy to take questions. Thanks.